G'day Westy here. Okay, today I'm going to give you a bit of a run through on the Unify control software. Um, just how to use it, what to do with it, um, how to figure out whether you're on the latest version, and a couple of key pointers. So, um, hopefully you've downloaded your controller software. If you haven't, then what you need to do is go to www.ubnt.com and then go across to downloads and then unify because we're talking about a unify ap here that we're going to be uh, working on in the in the controller software um, and look for your unify i've got a unify ap and it tells me the latest software so this one's the version 2 here I've only got the version 1 so and it tells me on 3.9.27 now something critical here um, if you are running an older version of like an older version i.e. like 3.9.19 or something older than that version there and you can't actually get which I'll show you how to look for in a minute you can't get that update I'll, what you need to do is you need to go down to software and get the latest unify controller and that's this 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 is um 5.6.36 because if you don't have the latest controller no matter what sort of custom um, download software patching you try and do you will not be able to upgrade the um the ap to the latest one because i've had a lot of problems trying to get it to work so so yeah so best download the latest software um, the latest controller software install it and then once you've installed it you you really just need this as a reference as okay so 3.9.27 um, and then once you've installed your controller you open your controller takes a couple of seconds it loads the Java software and then we'll be hitting this launch button in a moment before I get into the nitty gritty of how to run the um, the software I'll show you how to check your version before you even go anywhere um, so just launch in a browser and we'll just bring this across from my other screen um, oh, I've got all, I've already got this one set up here my trusty old Robo form so what you want to do is go down to settings down here on the left hand side down here click on settings go to maintenance and then go right down the bottom to maintenance and then go to show system config and that tells you the version on my unify AP um, just a UAP and it tells you the version that it's running which is exactly the same as uh, the one I was, I was talking about before so close that um, and you can have a look, I think it's in the main settings, just the main settings, I think it tells you what version you're, I'm trying to find it now, um, I think it's in, it might be in maintenance, yep, okay this tells you the current version of the actual uh, controller software, the actual unified controller software so um, yeah that's a trick um, you will not be able to have success or of, of, I haven't been able to do it of updating to the latest latest firmware with older controller software so save yourself all the pain and suffering and um, have a look at this and see how you go but normally when you start um, and log in it comes up with your main page there um, so you can click on down here you've got statistics tells you how many clients you're running, um, tells you all the recent activities, um, how many wireless clients I've got running on here, what the sort of traffic is running, uh, then you can go to the map so you can load your map on there, I've only got one, I, I haven't actually bothered upgrading the map on, this, on, the, on there, and this one here is, I use quite a lot, it's um, devices, it tells you what, um, so if you click on it, I'll just close this off, 
if you click on this line here which is the unify ap um you, you, it automatically brings up the properties page on the right hand side and on the property side you've got the details and it can look at everything um how, how what speed you've got uh on your unwired on your wired side side of your uplink to the to the unified um ap uh, whether it's full duplex tells you the throughput that's getting in and out um, your radio it's, it's button gives you um, a bit of information on what channel you're running what mode you're running whether it's HD 20 or 40 um, obviously if it's 40 you will not be able to see that with a normal 2.4 or 5 um, gigahertz um, phone or IP or uh, app or PC or normal network card won't see it it's usually HD 40 is normally set up for um, transmission point to point transmission for usually ISP stuff or if you're doing a large uh, wide area network you set it up on um, 40 um, just for the bridges uh, anyway I'm not going to get into that um, your, your wireless lands tells you uh, basically you can select on preference of name or whatever um, so I've got like three three clients connected and then your performance in the last 24 hours tells you tells me nothing at this stage uh, or 5 a.m. there hasn't been a lot going on here basically the highest usage has been at um, you can click on it and it brings up the screen here and it tells you you yeah, highlight over it and it gives you more data so it tells you what's been going on um, how much CPU usage how much RAM usage and that's actually on the AP unit itself so that's quite cool um, clients gives you how many clients you've got on there and the names of them um, uh, also you've got here users or guests there's no guests set up uh, or running at the moment and you can have, you can go to config here and you can actually change the H alias name of the so the alias name is a name when you go to here it's that changes this name of the device this is the IP address of my AP tells me the status that's connected and you'll notice that um, over here it's um, solid green light means it's fully connected so if you do if you do an update uh, and save your config it will start provisioning and, it, and this light will be flashing it's actually quite it's about 15 seconds to 20 seconds behind real time because mine's up here on the wall here um, and it's you know once it actually goes fully solid and I can connect to it with a phone or whatever um, this light's still flashing saying that it's pending and then 10-15 seconds after I actually am able to connect it so it's about a 15 second delay before you get real time information which is, isn't really real time but anyway um, so in the config section you've got general so you can change you can also turn the LED off or on and save it if you change it um, go to radios tells you whether you're running an HT um, 20 or 40 mode you can select a channel so I've got software that I'll actually check the, the range and the channels and see um, what's getting utilized because there's so many other wireless um, devices around and transmitters around you just you it'll tell tells me what sort of um, what sort of utilization of the channels is getting absolutely hammered and I'll just move across and, and move away from them say three channels away and then I can have a channel each side um, you can set it to auto if you wish to um, but I don't do that because it's um, yeah I seem to get better performance out of it so um, your wireless lands um, I've got three wireless lands set up at the moment I've got um, guest I've got Westy and I've got um, Zach AP access which is for my son for, for him and his friends and stuff I've got that all rate shaped and same with the uh, which I'll show you in a minute I've got the Daphne Street uh, one also rate shaped so when it gets connects they're not going to guts all the bandwidth um, services um, I haven't got I don't actually muck around with that too much network um, basically using DHCP so it's running DHCP um, wireless uplinks um, you can do all your mesh roaming and stuff like that. I don't actually muck around with that too much. And manage device. 
here you can do a few, quite a few things in the manage device area you can copy configs you can um, do custom upgrades but you cannot do custom upgrades unless in the maintenance section and settings you've got it set up with it um, ticked for automatic update and it will only automatic update to the latest version that's capable of the controller version that you're running so pretty much right back to square one what I was talking about um, disable this device can be excluded from the dash dashboard status and forget this device so you'd have to rebind it uh, re, re um, adopt adopt the device um, so yeah you know some call it binding some call it adopting um, this is just the way it is with um, ubiquity okay so I'll just close that out so if we go into settings so there's a few other things here clients it shows you three clients um, tells you down up up time all that sort of stuff whether you want to block it might force them to reconnect um, and then insights gives you pretty much anything that in, uh, outside of this um, the normal ones that you can actually see whether anybody else has tried to connect um, release notes that gives you the release notes of the latest um, uh, firmware that you're running on the controller uh, events tells me whether they've got any major events um, errors warnings in general I've pretty much got general ones I haven't got any issues at the moment um, alerts tells me whether I've got any alerts there's no events at this, mate, at this moment um, you've got live chat as well I've tried that and it just doesn't work um, I started chatting with one of the support guys about um, a problem I was having can't remember what it was now it's a couple of months ago and then all of a sudden you start getting through it um, and you're starting to do some like uh, putty stuff SSHing into your devices and then all of a sudden you're dumped from the queue and you're right back at the bottom at number 15 or something it's just insanity anyway I gave up in the end and fixed it myself so okay so if you go on the settings tab which is really where you do everything um, on this device you can change you can add, add change the site name um, country you can do your time frame your time um, I don't enable the advanced features but it's got and this is where you can tick and untick the automatic automatic update so this is in the uh, settings site uh, and if you untick this then you can go back to the main uh, devices page and then click on it and then go across and actually um, see if you can upload upload the latest firmware but beware I tried it didn't work it actually was pending and it just failed after a while I don't know why I had downloaded the correct bin file and everything um, yeah anyway um, so you can either disable or enable as a site-wide so but this is a global setting you can either enable or disable the LED the status LED um, if you don't enable it here you can actually change on each device whether you want it on or off um, and you'll notice that in, in some sections in here it will give you the op option to use site-wide um, global settings which is in here um, so you can enable alert emails I've, I don't muck around with this um, testing stuff too much um, what else is here oh, yeah, your, your normal um, if you want to have SSS, SSH connectivity to be able to connect into the AP you can do that either with putty um, or another SSH um, shell um, however there's not a lot you can actually do in, in the AP device itself with the routers and the switches yes you can you can do it a lot a lot more than what you can do with the graphical interface here um, but yeah really you can just reset it you can uh, you can actually flash this firmware back to your original factory reset uh, pretty much and that's it you can't really check the in, in interfaces you can't do any not much programming at all okay so then we've got not wireless networks um, as you can see I've got um, there's a maximum of four networks that can create a per wireless LAN group so um, that's just something to note so I've got a um, there's one LAN group that's in networks there's one LAN group here 
So this is a wireless LAN group, there's only one created. You can create more, and I don't know, but you might, if that's the case, you should be able to do four per wireless LAN group. I don't know. I haven't actually tried to max it out to see how many you can do. Okay, so I've got a, um, a, a guest um, guest Daphne network for, for my guests that turn up and they, uh, they don't have to worry about um, usernames and passwords. If I click on edit there, I've got it set up on enable this wireless network open so there's no security on it. Um, I've got block. Um, oh, actually, I haven't got apply guest policies. I should have that. So if I go save here and I go back to devices, you can see this is provisioning here. And if I click on it, it actually you can see it flashing here. This is what I was talking about. So once it actually comes back up online again, then um, after about 15 seconds, uh, this will actually change to connected, even though 10 15 seconds before that, which is not long really, um, it's up and running. Okay, so we'll go back into here, um, and I've got so so we'll go back into this edit um, group. So I've got apply guest policies, um, captive portal. Access you can you can go without that if you wish, it's up to you. But I've I've got them set up on VLAN ten. Um, I created a VLAN called VLAN ten, and VLAN ten I'll set up on the actual on my Edge router X in itself, uh, which I can go to in a totally different video if you wish to. Um, let me know, put, pop in the comments down here, and I'll see if I can sort that out for you and give you a bit of a rundown on how to configure all the all the. Um, router configuration for that um, to allow VLAN so my my VLAN clients um, like if I grab a mobile device just quick um, and I check out my wireless clients I'll just click on Daphne Actually, I'll untick the apply guest network because it's actually playing up at the moment. I think I need to reflash the device. So this is going to take a couple of minutes to go through. So I'll be back in just a minute. Then 10, but my router issues me with a 192 or oh, what was it? 172, 172 um, network. Anyway, I can't show you that, and I also can't show you that I've limited the um, speed um, by setting it up on the user group Daphne Guest, but you need to go down to user groups, so we'll just jump through to user groups, and in Daphne Guest I've got it set up so that, um, so I've created a group called Daphne Guest, and um, I've got it limited at Two meg per sec and one meg per sec, um, and then save that. I should actually change this one here. Oh, this kilobits per second, so I'll change that megs per second. Megs per second, I'll make this five. Uh, Ten and five. That's actually easier. So you can actually select um, kilobits per second, megabits per second. Um, and I'll wait there for provision and I've got full noise set up basically there's no no limit to uh, it's unlimited so it does it will do maximum uh, throughput okay so just back backslashing through here um, so yeah so once you've selected in, in your wireless network groups you can once you're editing them you can set, either set them up on a VLAN which I have got it set up on a VLAN but you, you do have to set the VLAN all the VLAN set up in your router if you want to do that so you, this really won't work unless you've got it set up um, on a router so this will actually add a tag to any data coming from this network that I've created here for guest Daphne um, with VLAN 10 on it um, so I've got the VLAN 10 set up so that they can't see anything else on my network. Um, just a bit of a security feature there. Uh, I haven't got any of this stuff set up. So um, 
so yeah so I don't know what IPS is new with uh, intrusion detection system I don't really know much about it I haven't done a lot of research about it I'll just close this out so as you can see once you've actually tagged uh, once you've actually gone into devices and then opened up this here you can then f carry on and go through and this actually stays on the right hand side so it's actually quite good if you're doing any updates you can see that it's live and um, provisioning or whether it's connected or not so it's really quite good so IPS is intrusion prevention system this has just come out with the latest version and I'm not actually, I haven't actually spent any time um, researching this or doing any uh, like checking the forums or doing any research on it so if anybody wants to know anything about that let me know um, down here somewhere in the comments and I'll um, I'll do my best and see if I can suss something out and, and see how it's going. Um, data pack, dark packet inspection. Um, I, I need a Unify security gateway for that, but I've got a. I'm running a um, a Unify. Uh, sorry, a Ubiquity um, Edge Router X, which is one of these. Um, and that's pretty much does all that um, deep packet inspection anyway. But the only thing it doesn't do. Is it doesn't come up with all this flash stuff here all your boxes don't light up here so I'm not really fussed about that I haven't got a, a wireless uh, sorry a network switch so that's not going to come up and my WAN's not going to come up because I don't have a, a unified security gateway um, but all the reviews I've looked through and all the actual actual live testing I've done I, I spent like 80 bucks on this on the uh, router X and it's so much better um, it's, yes you do have to if you want to do some advanced stuff like VPNs um, or you know IPsec tunnel, tunneling and all that sort of stuff you do have to use the command line interface but hey don't be scared it's only command line interface I can go into all that stuff later on if you wish um, and muck around it's actually really quite good fun and quite um, it's quite rewarding once you actually get that sorted out but it's pretty much like using Cisco um, command line interface, very similar, very similar, but not quite. Um, Cisco's a bit smarter. You don't have to type the full commands. You can do, you know, sh space ver and bang, it shows your version. You can do um, sh space int for showing interfaces. But with, um, but still, you bit anyway. I don't want to go into CLI stuff right now. It's uh, it's actually quite cool. You can use the tab key a lot. Once you start typing partial words, you can tab it and it'll finish it, or it'll give you options, and then you just add the letters to so it doesn't get confused. Tab to finish off, so it's quite good once you get used to it. Anyway, not going into that now. We're talking about this. Okay, so now where was I? So settings. So so really in the settings is a lot of the things that you'd be working with. Um, none of this stuff. I can't do any of this sort of stuff. Because I don't have a, um, a, a, a unified USG, <laughs> so you've got to have that apparently to, to use this stuff. Um, admins, I've got one admin, um, and that's me. Um, and it's got the um, user groups. Controller, don't muck around. I don't muck around with that stuff. I don't know. Don't know much about that. Notifications. Haven't mucked around with that yet, so this beta stuff's all new. Cloud access, haven't done that either. Um, elect device, haven't done that. Maintenance, yep, definitely do a little bit in here. So you can do your backups, so backups, back up your data. Um, um, and auto backup, you can set, it, set up auto backup to. Um, to back up for you so that's pretty much it really um, if you want to, if you want me to go into detail on how to set up networks and how to actually set these things up from scratch just just let me know and I'll I'll, I'll go to the trouble of doing it um, I'll pretty much try and undo everything I've done and start from scratch if you like so just just put down uh, you know anything that you want to know or anything that you would like to uh, me to actually put together and um, yeah we'll, we'll make it happen for you so uh, thanks for watching and subscribe comment let's get interactive about this stuff um, I've been doing this for a little for a little while now 
been involved with this stuff for a lot of years as far as um, like the old Pico stations and all that sort of stuff it's probably one of my most used videos because back in the day they, their videos from uh, U, U, uh, Unify or Ubiquity were pretty much written by rock spiders for rock spiders and no one could really understand it so um, no offence to rock spiders they're pretty cool the uh, rock spiders you know until you get the sun on them then they melt but anyway uh, that's me over and out and we'll catch you next time